Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the NECA Alien Kane action figure. This is part of the 40th anniversary collection of the 1979 film Alien. This is part of the third assortment of figures. This is a Walmart exclusive wave, but you can also get them at NECA's eBay and Amazon store. That's where I got mine. If you want to get these figures, they're in stock at walmart.com right now with free shipping. The only catch is you have to buy a set of all three. They don't sell them individually. This is a straight up re-release of the previous Kane in the compression suit. The only difference is this actually has John Hurt's likeness and his face isn't covered up by a face hugger. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you can see at the bottom, warning, there's an alien. This is Kane from NECA. Here he is in the package. He has his gun, two alternate heads, and two alternate helmet pieces. At the top, Alien's 40th anniversary collection. At the side, we've got Kane with his helmet off. At the other side, simply says Alien. At the bottom, there is a barcode in case that helps anybody, as well as a bunch of credits. And then the back, here he is looking down into the egg, and then here are eight other figures from the first three assortments. So no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He does come with a helmet for his spacesuit, and it comes in two parts. We got the base and the top, and there are two different versions of the top, one intact and one where the face hugger melted in to get to his face. He also has two alternate heads, one with the likeness of the actor John Hurt that is new for this release, rest in peace John Hurt, and one with a face hugger attached. He also comes with a laser pistol and a large flashlight. But before we look at those accessories, let's check out the actual figure. So the most notable part of this guy is the new head sculpt. This is the likeness of the actor John Hurt. They released Kane before, but didn't have the likeness rights for him, so they had to put the face hugger over him, and that has been corrected with this release. You can see he's got that cover over his head, very movie accurate, some tubes that are connected to his helmet. I will say that face sculpt looks great, spot on. Lot of sculpting detail all over his suit, it looks great. The shoulder pads are made of a soft material, not going to obstruct too much of the articulation. Pretty nice there. Doesn't have a lot of articulation on this figure overall, but it's a big bulky spacesuit. What do you expect? Lots of different texturing and detail all over suit. I mean, look at the sculpting detail all over this thing. Different panels on here. This is a 1979 version of what the future was going to look like. It's very retro looking. Got pockets and pouches everywhere different pads on there. It looks excellent and very movie accurate. So far I'm definitely enjoying the way this guy looks. We've even got his name on the outside of the spacesuit, kind of implying they didn't share the suits. And here's a figure broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now the only thing this release gives you that's new is the John Hurt head and it's very nice. But is it worth $30 just for the head? In my book, yes, I was going to buy him for sure for that head. But it does make the first release completely obsolete. Now let's check out his accessories. And let's start off with his heads. Here's his first head. This is the one with the face hugger attached. This is the one that came with the original Kane release. It looks great. The face hugger has a lot of detail on it. You can see those fingers wrapped around. And it looks good all the way to the back. And I will say I'm probably going to display one cane with the regular head and one with the face hugger head. And that should give me an extra face hugger head. I'm trying to figure out what I can do with that. And here's the second head. This is the one featuring the likeness of John Hurt. I imagine him passing away as wise as possible. Whoever owns his estate and likeness rights was willing to sell to NECA. It does look great and it does the actor justice. He's got that cover over his head. The detailing is fantastic. I really hope they use his likeness and give us a John Hurt in his Nostromo outfit out of the spacesuit. 
Now let's look at his helmet. It's got two pieces, the base and the glass dome. And there are two different versions of the glass dome, one intact and one with a hole melted from the face hugger. In order to attach his helmet, make sure you pull his head off first. If you try to slide the base of the helmet over his face, you could scuff the paint or damage the head sculpt. When the first release came out, I didn't quite realize this, and I definitely did some damage to some of the older figures. Here he is with the helmet off, and here he is with the base part of the helmet attached, and here with the entire thing. No longer am I going to have to take shots of him without showing his head or face or front of his helmet when reenacting the derelict scene. And if you wanted to, you could attach the melted top of the helmet with his regular head, but it doesn't really make much sense. Here's his face hugger head with the base of the helmet attached. And then with the entire melted helmet attached, showing the face hugger melted through the glass dome and attach itself to its face. And just like with the other head, you can attach the complete glass dome with the face hugger inside. It doesn't really make sense unless you think the face hugger got trapped in there with him somehow. Now let's check out his laser pistol. Online, I've seen this thing dubbed as an RXF M5 EVA pistol. They never actually used this in the film. It was strapped to his side there. I've seen a lot of people complain, well, if they had laser guns, how come they didn't just kill the alien? Well, if they had done that, it would have bled through the hole and killed all of them. This thing has nice paint job, nice texturing and weathering on it. You can see silver, black, a little bit of red on there. Pretty nice prop. Now he can't actually even hold this accessory. Here it is, sort of balanced in his left hand. I don't know if they're going for movie accuracy or what, as they never held this, but definitely disappointing that he can't actually hold this thing. Like I said, just balance there, it'll fall right out, and there's no chance of holding it in the other hand. And here he is, holstering this weapon onto his side. Now let's look at his large flashlight. This is pretty much a flashlight in a large, bulky black box. It must be what a 1979 version of a futuristic flashlight would look like. Very retro looking. Like I said before, big black box. It's got a green handle. It's got some weathering, some gray and silver at the front. It looks good. It looks retro. Here he is holding the flashlight. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's sitting at about 7.1 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. And if he wanted to go to the top of the helmet, he'd be sitting at about 8 inches tall. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, it's on a ball joint. Of course, you can rotate from side to side. You can look up and down about this much. Pretty nice. You can pretty much move his head all the way around. Shoulders also on a ball joint. They can go out about this far. It's about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Like I said before, the shoulder pads are soft. They move up with the shoulders, not hindering the articulation too much. Going a little lower, he's got a bicep cut below that. Mine's pretty tight. Single jointed elbows and they can barely go up at all. That's a little bit disappointing, but I do understand the bulkiness of the suit. He's got a rotation below there as well. His wrist here is kind of on a ball joint. Kind of go all the way around. Not hinged. Definitely a ball joint. In the middle, it's got a ball joint as torso. Can rotate around. Can go forward and back about that far. There's another Bit of waist swivel below that, very tight on mine. Legs go out about this far, two ball joints here. They can rotate and swivel a little bit independently of the ball, but not by too much. Legs go forward about that far, back about that far. Single jointed knees go back a little bit less than 90 degrees, and they can rotate that way. And then his ankles also on a ball joint. They can go forward and back, they can rotate, they can tilt and rock as well. Here's Dallas, Kane, and Lambert getting suited up. 
getting ready to go check out that derelict vessel. Ash continues to assist them as they get suited up. And now they're ready to go. Ash wishes them luck. And secretly, he's hoping they're going to find some horrible or wonderful things out there. Here's Kane, Dallas, and Lambert discovering the space jockey. Dallas is closely inspecting the space jockey, observing that his bones are broken outward, like something exploded out of him. Meanwhile, Kane discovers something below. Dallas and Lambert end up lowering Kane down to the eggs. They don't realize what a fatal mistake this is going to turn out to be. Kane goes down there, and he can't help but investigate the eggs. He observes there's something organic inside these eggs. As one of the eggs opens up, Kane is taken back at first, but curiosity gets the best of him. He sticks his entire face in there. And before he can even react, the face sucker jumps out of the egg. And like I said, before he's even able to react, this thing is on his face. And this ends up being the outcome. Kane's on the floor. The face hugger has gone through his helmet and attached itself to his face. And presumably, Dallas and Lambert would have had to have gone down there, gotten him, and then carried him all the way back to the Nostromo. Next, they put Kane in the medical bay where Ash keeps an eye on him. And we all know what happens at the dinner table later. Now let's check him out, compared to some other action figures. Starting out with the original Kane release. Here he is, next to the original Kane release. The only difference is going to be the alternate John Hurt head. Beyond that, it's 100% the same body and articulation, but the paint shade is a little bit different. You can see the legs there moving upward. There are some significant paint differences, but overall, it is the same figure. Here he is with the rest of his wave. This is Series 3 of NECA's Alien 40th Anniversary Collection. This is a Walmart exclusive. It's the first time we've gotten an Ash figure, the second time we've gotten a Kane figure, and about the 20th time we've gotten a Big Chap figure. Then, here he is next to the Series 2 of the 40th Anniversary Collection. We've got Parker, Brett, and the bloodied Big Chap. This was an online retailer exclusive, basically meaning you could order it from almost anywhere. And here he is with the first assortment of 40th anniversary figures. Here's Ripley, Dallas in his compression suit, and the concept alien. This wave was a Target exclusive. Kane and Dallas share 100% the same body, except different hands. And now, here he is with a couple of single releases from the 40th anniversary collection. We've got both the Ultimate Big Chap and the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Glow in the Dark Ultimate Big Chap. Both these guys came with an egg, a chest burster, and a face hugger. Here's the entire NECA Alien 40th Anniversary Collection. We've got a total of 11 figures, and we know three more. Series 4 is going to have Lambert and Ripley in their compression suits, as well as a little bit more of a transparent big chap. My fingers are really crossed that they're going to give us a Series 5 with Dallas Kane and Lambert in their regular outfits. If they did that, I would feel like my collection is complete. Don't get me wrong, they could milk this if they wanted to. They could give us a Parker with his outer shirt off, bloodied up from the end. They could give us a chest bursting Kane, an egg morphing Dallas and Brett, a panties Ripley, although I know that'll never happen. And they could give us some cryo chambers. I'd buy all of it up. And here he is. Next to all of the original releases, the only one that's not getting a re-release with the 40th anniversary collection is the giant foam space jockey in the background. That is an exquisite diorama. Here he is with the entire crew that of Stromo. They've given us all seven characters. And I'll stop beating this dead horse with a stick, but NECA, please give me Kane, Dallas, and Lambert in their regular outfits. I want to have all seven of them together. Here is every character Neck has made in their compression suit. We've got Amanda Ripley from Alien Isolation, Ellen Ripley, Kane, Lambert, and Dallas. In addition to getting the original releases, 
and the 40th anniversary re-releases. I did get multiples of at least one of these guys. Here is every alien style compression suit figure I have, and I'm definitely going to be getting another Ripley and Lambert with Series 4. Then, here he is next to the Prometheus figures in their spacesuits. And just like with the alien spacesuit figures, I did get multiples of these guys. I made a bunch of customs and made the majority of the Prometheus crew that used the spacesuits. Now let's check them out, compared with some aliens from each of the different alien films. Starting off with a couple of ultimate big chaps from the 1979 Alien. And here, next to a couple of ultimate xenomorphs from the 1986 film Aliens. Then, with a couple of dog aliens from Alien 3. And here, with a couple of aliens from Alien Resurrection. Then, next to a couple of aliens from Alien vs. Predator. And here he is with the Alien Warrior and the Pred Alien from Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. These are a couple of older NECA figures. NECA has promised they're going to give us an updated version of both the Warrior and a deluxe Pred Alien. I hope they're going to give us those right after they finish with the Alien 40th Anniversary Collection. And they probably are going to coincide with the release of the Ultimate Wolf Predator. Then, with a couple of Deacons from Prometheus. And now, next to a couple of Aliens from Alien Covenant. And here he is, with a couple of NECA Ultimate Predators. Then, next to a couple of Engineers from Prometheus. And finally, here he is, next to some more human figures from NECA's various Alien and Predator lines. So overall, this is a fantastic figure. The sculpt is just amazing. There is so much detail in this guy. His articulation definitely leaves some to be desired, but it is a bulky spacesuit. You don't need him to be a super articulated figure. Paint job is excellent. I don't see any flaws at all. What makes me less excited for him is just a little bit more of the same. It's pretty much a re-release. Don't get me wrong, the John Hurt head is fantastic and it's needed. It was very disappointing they couldn't get it before, and they released him with a face hair covering his face. Nick always finds a loophole to do stuff like that. But it was really annoying. Every time I would shoot the space jockey scene, I'd have to have his head turned from the camera, etc. Overall, if I were to rate this guy, I'd give him a very solid 7 out of 10. This compression suit sculpt is very nice. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.